Nigeria has recorded 790 new cases of COVID-19, the highest in a single day, bringing its total infections to 26,484. This was confirmed on Wednesday night by the Nigeria Center for Disease Control in a tweet via its official handle. Just like the previous day, the new cases were recorded across 20 states of the Federation and the Federal Capital Territory. Given a breakdown of the cases, the NCDC noted that the five states with the highest number of infections were Delta with 166 cases, Lagos with 120, Enugu 66, Edo 60, and Ogun 43. Others include Kano with 41, Kaduna 39, Ondo 33, Rivers 32, Bielsa 29, Imo 20, Kwara 18, Oyo 11, and Abia 10. Meanwhile, states with fewer cases include Benue with six, Gombe four, Yobe, Bauchi, and Kebi, each recording two cases. This comes as the FCT recorded 65 new cases. But on a positive note, 406 more patients have been successfully treated and discharged from the isolation centers in various parts of the country. Joining us is a medical practitioner, Ayodeji Olani, Olani, to take a look again at the conversation around uh, COVID-19. Good, good to have you, Dr. Olani. Good morning, Amaka. How are you doing? I'm very well. Thank you for asking. How are you? I'm great this morning. Great. Now, the numbers uh, continue to rise, Doctor, but the reopening of the economy has also continued with uh, flights resuming. In your medical view and perspective, what's the worst that could happen? Yeah, the worst that could happen will be that the numbers will keep increasing and government is going to be spending more resources compared to what will be coming in in order to screen, to treat, and also to take care of uh, patients. Um, if you notice, the isolation centers are filled to the brim, and they're trying to expand. Expansion in the sense of using public places or event centers or schools or hotels to take care of clients, or uh, that's patients. But to be honest, it's gonna be a disaster. Opening up the economy further, especially with flights, won't be able to We've lost, we've even lost, um, lost control. We've lost um, monitoring patients or clients out there because the numbers are there. Imagine 138,000 have been screened so far. We need to do more. What I think the government should be thinking of is encouraging people who are importing or producing the kits or reagents that are being used to screen patients so we can have more than enough. But instead of doing that, I think they're doing the other way around. Hmm. In order to get um, testing done or the testing kits available, they're charging one million naira for validation. They're encouraging them. They're charging 300 test kits. If the state is doing a test for 50,000 naira and you're charging people, the importers or the manufacturers, 300 kits, that's 15 million naira in this economy. Hmm. So invariably, you are bringing down yourself how can you be wanting to screen a whole lot of people and you end up siphoning getting a uh, um, reagents or kits that are needed for the investigations and collecting huge sums of money that should be invested privately into assisting the government it should be like a government uh, public uh, uh, private partnership mm. to assist them but it's the other way around so opening up the economy, ensuring that the flights resume, they need to put many things in place. Mm. Now, the airports, they have robots. So they say, if they are working, we aren't sure. How the maintenance culture is going to be, we don't know. Social distance in the airport, it's good. Then um, education, educating the people, mm. it's, it's going to take a whole lot. Uh, Dr. It's going to take a whole Dr. lot. Lani, the Lagos airport is choked. Before you, you yes. progress, l l let me interject a bit. It is difficult, it seems difficult to find a balance. On the one hand, yes, the safety of the people is more than crucial and more than import important. We can't overemphasize on that. On the other hand, uh, the economy of the nation also is important and you know, needs to uh, move on. It's where do we find a balance? Do you think, again, the, the government is counting on herd immunity? What's your thought? Oh, well, um, 
we all know the economy, even without COVID, has not been favorable to the common man. Um, counting on herd immunity is a double-edged sword. Yes, it could be good. Yeah, the economy will come, should come back to life. People should be earning, earning for themselves and taking care of the family. But on the other hand, the asymptomatic people, that patients that are positive, <laughs> that you've not screened, will go out there. Now, those that will get symptomatic, we will not know because we've, not been, we've lost the ability to screen en masse. So would that be done in the airport? We can't really say. To what capacity? If I'm using the PCR machines, some tests will take about four hours. Some will take days to get the results, as it is now, because the reagent and the capacity has been limited. And if you're going to use the antibody test screen, you are not certain. But we know that 90 to 97% could be accurate. So counting on head immunity is a double-edged sword for the government. They're going to open up the economy. People are going to make means of livelihood. We are going to increase the infection rates because people are going to cross border without limits. Hmm. You're going to see someone fly from Sokoto to Lagos to infect people here from Kaduna, from Kano to Benue, to Kogi, to Calabar. So it's, it's really going to be a tough time. Hmm. All right, Dr. Olani, that's all that we can take in the interest of time. Thank you so very much for your thoughts and keep safe out there too. Thank you so much. Don't forget to use a mask. Excellent. <laughs> we'll do here. <laughs>